Welcome back YouTube, we have Ahmed again from In-Depth Tech Reviews and in today's video I'm gonna help you decide which OS is good for you. So if you are thinking to switch between Android and iOS, that could be helpful for you. Or if you are happy with what you've got already, but you want to know what others are getting with their smartphones, that could be helpful too. I will provide you with a detailed comparison between iOS 13 on the iPhone 11 Pro Max and Android 10 on the Pixel 3 XL. So both companies now create their own hardware and software, which is fair enough. My comparison will be classified in six different categories and I will declare a winner for each one based on my opinion. You might agree or disagree with me, so that's absolutely fine. So please let me know in the comments what do you think. Also note that I'm not discussing any hardware features as this is not the purpose of this comparison. So let's check how they are compared to each other. But before getting started, let's make sure you subscribe, hit the bell icon to get notified every time I post a new video. So let's jump in. So the first category I will start with is the dark theme and gestures. Let's start with the dark theme. When you compare Android 10 dark theme with iOS, you will see that Google didn't push the dark theme to all native apps at the launch of Android 10, while on iOS, all native apps support dark theme since day one. Even after a couple of months of the Android 10 release, I still have a lot of apps that don't support the dark theme just yet. So I think Google needs to be on a schedule here as we don't need to wait for two months to get system-wide dark theme, if not even longer than that. When it comes to gestures, the iOS 13 feels smoother, specifically when you swap between apps. While on Android 10, sometimes you get a lag. Also, the back button gesture on Android overlaps with the horizontal scrolling in some apps like the Play Store. And sometimes you find yourself going back accidentally while on iOS, they took that in consideration and the back gesture respects other apps design. Also, the speaking gesture to get the side menu on Android 10 is not easy to deal with as it overlaps with the back gesture and it's even harder to get when you have a case on your phone that blocks you from touching the edge of the screen. While on iOS, the side menu is not part of the OS design, so it's fine to have the back gesture from the edge of the screen as it won't overlap. So when it comes to dark theme and gestures, iOS is doing better, so I hope Google will come up with something soon. Next category is the ease of use. And that's where Android 10 really shines. Starting from the volume controls on Android 10, when you press the volume rockers, you can not only change volume like on iOS, but you can tap this little icon and change everything related to the volume in a very simple and easy way. While on iOS, you have to jump to settings to modify other stuff. And to silence your phone, you have a separate switch for that, which I think is a waste of resources and space in the phone. Next, the now playing feature in Android 10, where the phone automatically identifies the songs playing around you all the time, so you don't need to take your phone out of your pocket, unlock it, and then open Shazam to know the name of the song, as sometimes the song finishes before you even start your music ID app. Not only this, but it saves the history of songs played around you, so you can get back to them without even doing anything. Thing. While on iOS, Shazam or Siri are your only options, which will require extra steps and time. Next is the split screen, and that's one of the best features of Android for a long time, and thankfully we still have it in Android 10, as it saves me a lot of effort if I want to do two things at once. I always do shopping on mobile while watching a review about the product I'm trying to purchase, which is impossible to do on iOS. Next is copying text. How many times you open an app that doesn't allow you to copy text and you have to write things yourself by jumping back and forth between apps. Android 10 will save you a lot of effort here. So you can copy text from your recent apps screen and paste it anywhere you want. Something that I really miss when I use an iOS device. But there are only a couple of things that iOS do better here is the ability to edit the share sheet and to choose the options you want to show while on Android it's full of options that you cannot get rid of. Also the ability to choose the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth networks from the Action Center which is something we used to have in a stock Android but Google decided to take it off. So in this category, Android 10 by far is easier to use and offers you cool features to play around with. Next category is the native apps. 
I will start with the voice memos. Google just released the new recorder app that can detect the type of sounds on the fly, either if it's a music, whistle, or even birds. And it can also transcribe your words, and all of this can be done without an internet connection on the device, which is crazy. Not only this, but it also allows you to search for words in your recording or even the type of sounds it recorded. Finally, you can share your recordings in text, audio or text and audio all together. When it comes to the iPhone, you just have the basic recorder which can only record your sound without anything special, so Google by far exceeded my expectations in this part. Next, the phone app. On both phones, they are good enough for making and receiving calls and offer pretty much the same functionality, but on Android, there is a slight edge as you can search for the number you want online from within the phone app itself without the need to open Google search first. Also, Android here is taking advantage of Google services, which make things easier for you. Next is the messaging. When it comes to messaging, iOS definitely has the edge here because of the iMessage and the Memoji features you get with the iOS. While on Android, messaging app is just for normal text messages and MMS. So iOS is the winner here. When it comes to the keyboard, the Gboard in Android is the best keyboard out there as it offers plenty of features like glide typing, searching the web for locations, articles or GIFs and share them immediately. Also you can pin copied text for future use, translate text in your chat in addition to the floating keyboard. In iOS, the native keyboard also has the glide typing, but nothing else. However, if you are in the messaging app, iOS might give you some functions similar to Gboard, but only in the messages app. However, you still can install Gboard on your iOS device, but there are a couple of missing features like clipboard binning and the floating keyboard. So Android is better when it comes to the keyboard. When it comes to the Photos app, both apps are pretty much offering the same functionality, but the iOS app has an edge when it comes to video editing, as it gives plenty of options like adding filters, change exposure, contrast, brightness, and so on. It can also allow you to add filters to your video, while on Android you can only do basic things like trimming, rotating, and stabilizing. So iOS is better here. Next, the camera app. And I'm not talking here about the photo quality, but I'm comparing what you can do with each camera app beside taking photos. On Android, Google Lens is integrated with the camera, which will allow you to trigger Google Lens to copy text, send emails, locate places by pointing your camera towards a business card, which is not possible on iOS. But you still can download Google Photos that has Google Lens integrated but with limited functionality and you have to capture the image first to be able to use Google Lens. Also on Android you have the playground feature which is a kind of a gimmick but sometimes you can have fun with it. So I think the camera on Android offers a lot more than iOS. Next, the mail app. There is no much of a difference between the two, but the iOS app looks better with better font, ability to tap and hold to get a glance at the email, and better multi-selection with the swipe gesture. However, the Gmail app has this handy feature called Smart Compose that helps you to complete your email text using prediction. And it really works for me and saved me some time. So I want to declare a winner here as each one was better in its own way. So in this category, Android was better in four apps while iOS was better in two apps only. So the win is for Android here. Let's move on to the next category. In this category, I will compare the ability to customize your phone. Let's start with the widgets. Both has the functionality, but they're implementing it in a different way. On Android, you can put your widgets anywhere on the screen, while on iOS, you have a dedicated place for your widgets. So it depends on your personal taste here. When it comes to fonts and themes, Google recently released the Pixel theming app with the Pixel 4 that can allow you to change fonts, icons, accent colors, and icon shapes and save your customization for future use. While on iOS, you can change the fonts by installing third-party apps like Fonts Diner or change the icon's size under accessibility. When it comes to wallpapers, Google released the Pixel 4 Wallpapers app that gives you the compass wallpaper that changes based on your device compass and you can also change its colors. Doodle is another wallpaper that also gives you different styles and you can build your own if you want to. Others change based on the device theme and finally some live wallpapers that has moving objects. On iOS you have three categories. Dynamic that uses your device accelerometer to move the objects on the screen 
or stills that change based on your device theme and finally the live category that moves when you tap and hold on them you can also activate dark appearance that dims any wallpaper if your dark theme is active finally the always on display which is only available on android devices and apple decided to only keep it for the apple watch so while ios offers you a decent amount of customizations but not as much as what you get with android so i think android is better here but that's based on my personal taste you might have a different opinion now let's talk about Google Assistant and Siri. And this comparison ends before it even begins because Google Assistant is better. And if you didn't check my previous video about Google Assistant and Siri, you can click the card showing now on the screen. So here is a quick demo. Remember that my keys are in the backpack. Okay, I'll remember that. Where is my keys? Here's what you told me. Remember that my keys are in the backpack. Remember that my keys are in the backpack. Done. Where are my keys? Interesting question. Lastly, the App Store versus Play Store. In my opinion, the apps in the App Store are better and more refined than the Play Store apps. Also, the games available on the App Store are better, so if you are into games, iOS will be better for you. So I'm done with my comparison and for me, iOS has better looks, gesture navigation, App Store and messaging. But Android is smarter with apps like Google Lens, Google Assistant, the new recorder app and the upcoming live captions feature. I also think that Android is easier to use with some little touches that makes your life easier, like copying text from recent apps, split screen, screen pinning and more. So for me, Android is the best choice as I don't care that much about gaming or the looks. I can sacrifice that for getting better functionality. So please let me know your opinion in the comments and don't forget to hit the thumbs up if you like my video. So thank you for watching and see you the next video.